Okay, thank you very much, ladies, for taking the time to join and speak to myself on behalf of the Clydeside team today. Now, can you just introduce yourselves and tell me who you care for? Hi, I'm Lynn, and I look after my father, Robert. I live with him and care for him 24-7. Kim? I'm the Carer Centre Manager, and I manage the Carer Services in Western Bartonshire. My name is Linda, and I care for my husband, Thomas, who has Parkinson's, and that is a 24-7 care role. Thank you very much, ladies. How difficult has it been caring for someone during lockdown especially? Well, basically, I've lost myself. I don't have any time for myself whatsoever anymore because Dad used to go to a wee daycare centre three days a week. Now I don't have that. I can't really go out and leave him much because his mobility has decreased drastically uh, due to lockdown because he's not moving around. It's just, I haven't seen my friends since last December. They live over in Greenock and I just, I can't go over to visit them anymore just very hard. You just feel very, very alone because obviously I've been frightened to go out also because dad's high risk as he has asbestosis. So any sign of the disease in this house would be tragic, I'm afraid. So I don't ha really have a lot of people. The thing that's kept me going for the last few years especially has been the carers centre, the phone me, no one else phones me. It's just, without the carers, I would be 100% alone. What about yourself, Linda? How difficult has it been for yourself caring for somebody during lockdown? Lockdown for us meant that we were literally at home for about the 12, 13 weeks. With Tom's condition, he wasn't shielding, but very vulnerable. And as Lynn said, any activities that he went to, which was good for him to stimulate him and, you know, get the company, they, of course, all stopped. We are fortunate that we have a, quite a wide circle of friends. And most of the friends have kept in touch with us by the modern technology which has been good if we hadn't had that technology would have felt pretty cut off i personally have missed the activities and indeed the activities that i went to through the carer center as lynn said they've been very good at phoning and keeping in touch with you the carer center has been a big support to me during this time to allow me to care for tom how are the people that you're both caring for coping especially with the changes in the routine. Dad just sits in his room all the time, watches his TV. He has Alzheimer's. That's deteriorated. His short-term memory has gone. His long-term memory, oh, he took the hind legs off a donkey, but his mobility is caused by the Alzheimer's. And it's the old adage, if you don't use it, you lose it. He's quite happy sitting there because he doesn't realise that he's not doing himself any good. But he's quite happy just sitting in his room and he'll shout on me to go up. I've got to be there 24-7. I think when daycare, if daycare opens, I'm going to have a job getting him back to it again because he's become so comfortable at home. But he needs it for his own health. He really does need it, but he doesn't see it that way. When do you get time for yourselves? Do you get time just no. now for yourselves? No, not really. No. Not really. No, it's um, you have to kind of try and snatch maybe 10 minutes here, five minutes there. As Lynn says, it's 24 seven. You really feel you can never take your eye off the ball. The condition that Tom has would progress anyway. But lockdown and the fact that he's not been able to 
attend physically to his different clinics and his physio and all these kind of things. That has had a bearing on his decline. He tries very hard to keep normality, but um, the condition doesn't allow that. And lockdown certainly adds to it. It's not, not good for him at all. And it's definitely not good for yourselves. You are the main carers. You're right. You're right. Because if you're tired and you're exhausted and then you, you become, well, I'm speaking for myself, you become grumpy, you become angry at yourself because that's not the way you want to be. Indeed, you certainly don't want to be like that around a loved one. And you kind of feel is it impacting on your level of care because you are tired. I feel like that I want to care for Tom and I know he wants me to care for him. He's most comfortable here at home. It's very difficult to try and get time and if you were to get time it's all the planning that you put, logistics you put in place to allow you to get maybe an afternoon to yourself in some form. So it is, it's quite quite an intense role being a carer. And if I could just come to yourself, Kim, um, yeah. if you could just explain to me the, the, the support that you've had in place for the carers, especially during lockdown. When we went into lockdown, the situation changed for, for unpaid carers overnight. They became the people in our community that were at the centre of this and really that bore the burden of this. Caring for somebody is very undervalued and under-recognised anyway. And we are in touch with 1,300 people. So the change when we went into lockdown for us was phenomenal. We deliver our services very much on the philosophy that the thing that will make the biggest difference to people is other people. And we want to try and somehow get back to that scenario as quickly and as safely as we can. Lynn and Linda have described very articulately the unintended consequences of it, like the deterioration in the cared for person. And I think that will be the legacy of this. Generally, you will find that carers like them have their own strategies for coping and have a very good understanding of the illness that they're dealing with. <clears throat> But I think the last four months will have had a huge impact on, on that illness. So people that went into it coping and managing and having those strategies might be seeing a real shift in that illness. You know, the cared for person will be coming out of it in a different way than, than when they went into it. It's places like yourself, like the Carer Centre, that make these situations bearable for people and give them that wee bit of support. Would you say that it was like a community, a daycare centre? For me, absolutely, because I'm an only child. I don't have any children of my own, so it's me and dad. So the carers have become my lifeline to the outside world, apart from the chats that I have all the time, which is greatly appreciated. But I've got nothing, you know, I, I, I really miss it, you know, because it's, and I don't see the end at the moment because I've just become resigned to the fact that this is a new normal and I'm cut off from the world now, apart from speaking to the likes of Kim or the various members of staff who call me on a regular basis. So it's wonderful to have that, but that's all I've got now. If I can use Lynn's situation as an example, is we have a service called Out of the Blue, which is a replacement care service. Basically, is it, it provides a replacement care for her so she can have what we would talk about as a life alongside caring. Now that service didn't disappear, it was still there and we were desperately encouraging people to try and use it but for people like Lynn they were absolutely terrified and they're still absolutely terrified because what that means is a care provider, a care worker coming into their house. That to say to somebody that worker's going to come into your house and they've been in somebody else's house, utterly terrifying and so there was another kind of lifeline that people had lost. So it wasn't that, that the service wasn't there for people. We were still there, we were still providing it, but an unintended consequence I think of it was that, that people didn't want to use it.
important to you do miss physically going to the centre and attending the different groups that you go to because what is said in these groups stays in these groups which is a great thing for a carer because you feel then these are people that really get it, really understand it's nice speaking to people on Zoom, it's nice for your friends to phone, for your family to visit you in the garden but sometimes you think I really miss being with these other carers physically because these people so get it, understand why some days you feel like that and other days you're able to cope and other days you're not able to cope. So it has been greatly missed, the centre in my life, I must admit. When I say the centre, I mean both the staff and in particular the other carers. Yeah, I totally agree with that. No one understands like the Carer Centre family. It's totally different, isn't it, Linda? It's it is. And there's one couple in particular that we are very close to and they are absolutely marvellous and they get it and what, what a joy it is to be around them. And as they, I think that's why you're missing them, you're missing the other carers. And I see, um, it's a service that I hope, and indeed that particular one um, there in Dumbarton Road, I can't thank them enough for what they've done before this, but in particular during this, these testing days. And uh, I do use that word testing quite, quite strongly. They have been testing days, but thank goodness the Carers Centre and in particular the staff there have been there to help us and support us. Absolutely. Kim, on a finishing note, could you give me a wee bit of information about how people would be able to access the centre that have maybe not done so before and they're caring for someone? We have a website and that's www.carerswd.org. Or they can just phone the general number and somebody will direct them to where they need to be. We're asking carers not to come to the carer centre at the moment. Carers can use the telephone, they can, they can email us, they can go onto our website and just look at the information. Um, and if they make a phone call, someone will get back to them relatively quickly. Thank you, Kim, for that information. Thank you, ladies, again. It's been a pleasure to speak to you all. And thank you for sharing your experience and information today with the Clydesider as well that maybe help other people that are out there and have not accessed this centre. Thank you very much for taking an interest in us. It's ve that is very much appreciated, highlighting our cause and the wonderful work that the Carer Centre do for people like Linda and myself. So here, thank you here, <laughs> Yes, thank you. Yes, here, here, Lynn. Thank, thank you. you, ladies. Thank you.